time to build this grow room. So I'm starting with the flower side and then I'll clean out the rest of the uh, bed side and do that. So let's start with the flower side. The first thing is, you gotta clean this shit. Now phase number two, taking all this cardboard and doing some bullshit work, cutting it up and taping it all down to become flooring. So yeah, fun shit. Right now, for the cardboard, you can use like even some like masking tape. Most likely you want to use duct tape though. Cut coat scissors, these are awesome, and these cut pennies in half. So these are great. You want to use thick cardboard. So the kind of cardboard you can buy at Walmart, like the boxes, and just break them down. These are already thick cardboard that like things like washers and dryers and stuff came in. I uh, just happen to already have them. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be enough though, so I might have to use some of my other packing boxes and stuff and buy some boxes or go look behind the store. But anyway, that's the next step is laying the floor down with cardboard. So, let's get to cutting. Actually, I think I'm gonna use a knife. There you go. That'll be kind of part of my floor. Now she's all done. Went ahead and uh, used some Gorilla Duct Tape in some parts to really make sure that this is not going to come apart. So it took three big boxes to fill this whole area right here. Unfortunately, one of the big boxes I got is that one right there, um, which is for my AC. So for the other area, I might need to break apart some of the boxes, some smaller ones. I need to go buy some, but I think I have enough. I think I have enough. Anyway, uh, the same process will be repeated on the other side. So let's go ahead and do this side now, and let's get started with the pan plastic. That big old roll of pan plastic out. And uh, yeah, this right here, this is the fun part, so this rolls, it's pretty heavy. The thing is, it comes like this, see? And it unfolds 10 feet, so kind of weird how you have to work with it because it comes all rolled up and folded up in this thing right here. So I'm going to have to like unfold a lot at a time and then work my way, work my way around this whole entire area. So I'm trying to think about how I'm going to do that now. Um, I know if I start stapling, stapling that over there and taping it down, as I move this way, and then I have to then carry this big old hunk of freaking plastic and roll it up there and then try to roll it across, roll it back down. So basically I think what my idea is going to be is going to try to unroll as much as I can right now. So yeah, fun shit. Gorilla duct tape. All right, so what I did here is I went ahead and I pulled this top on this side and I duct taped this down right here. I'll make sure this makes a nice straight line. So I'm actually gonna pull this up just a little bit more. The weight of it, see right now it's not going straight. So I'm gonna make sure this is a nice straight line. I'll put more duct tape this way just to hold it there. Now I can pull that plastic. Now this side here I had previously cut five, five feet off um, before, so it's not all even. No big deal, I just tuck it under and fold it. Then I put a piece of tape going this way and this side just to kind of tack and hold it in place. That way I can start pulling the panda plastic away from that edge. So I'm going to put a couple pieces of tape on the edge there so I can start pulling it this way and keep it even as I tape it down and then weigh it down with a little piece of 2x4 or something. I have to come up this way and then staple it to the ceiling and all that good shit. All right. All right, so even though it's uh, much more work doing it this way, I'd rather the plastic be all one piece, so um, I'm going to do it this way. It would be much easier just to, to measure out the length of the floor, over, over shoot by a, little, by a couple inches, and then, and then cut it, and then tape it all down, and then overlap it by another foot and tape it down and come up, and do four separate pieces like that. If you take more tape, it would be easier. I might end up doing it that way, because it's still going to be airtight, because it's, it's Gorilla Duct Tape, right? Um, but I'd rather have it be one piece, just to be safe. All right, I gotta take some piece of plastic, hold this plastic here, and it's got the end on everything. I gotta, I gotta pull it up, I gotta use a, a step stool or something, and then I gotta staple it across the ceiling. And so, uh, that's not gonna be fun. Here.
each time, each time I'm moving this down the ladder, I'm making sure the ends are right where my two by fours are going to be. That way, I know it's pull. It's gonna be pulled taut correctly. Um, I don't have the two by fours around. I have one little one, so I got to get some two by fours. Yeah, but I got some other. Actually, you know what? I got some heavy stuff I can cut up over there. It's a uh, drywall. So I pull this out here. As you can see, I'm pulling it down and I'm coming across. That's where I have the edge of the ladder that holds down the edge where I want the edge at. And when I'm inside here, what I'm doing is bam, I'm putting a piece of tape like that right there, putting three staples in it, making sure I pull this taut across, putting another piece of tape with some staples in it. And I keep doing that all the way down, putting a piece of tape. Um, and you can see that one. Like that. Put a piece of tape, staples in it, put a piece of tape and staples in it. I just keep doing it all the way down. Um, now, if you really want to be anal about this, I guess you can unroll this whole entire thing out ahead of time, right? And after you have the whole thing unrolled and everything, you can then uh, basically take it and, and measure the ceiling where everyone is going to be and put, and put pieces of tape on it ahead of time where you're going to be stapling it. Exactly, measure exactly on the floor of the ground. But I don't know, I don't want to like mess up and shit. This is just easier for me. Keep stretching it down this way. You're coming down like this. You keep coming down about a foot every time. A little piece of tape and then put it on there. And stretch all the way down like that. I'm going to do that all the way across. So, um, yeah, I'm going to show you what that kind of looks like real quick. Take a piece of tape here, get them ready. Rock and roll. Make sure it's all pulled, stretched, taut. I want to make all this right here as, as taut as I can get it. Put my piece of tape there. Staple gun. Bam, bam, bam. Just like that. I'm going to do that all the way down. So now you can actually see a little bit kind of what I've been doing here. Uh, there you go. Now I'm going to show you real quick. We've got three rows done so far, so this row I stay closest together because that's at the edge of the the very edge. Now you can see because this is not perfectly perpendicular, perpendicular, it's like straight, it's not perfectly straight. That side over there is starting to go at an angle as well. See how it's coming at an angle like that? So we've got an angle coming down here because we have an angle here. I couldn't unstaple it all, but I don't want to do all that because fuck all that shit. It'll be fine. I'm, I'm going to overhang stuff anyway, so it's not a big deal. And now I have three, so I have a piece of tape here, as you can see. So So as you can see, if you do that all the way down, then uh, when you do that all the way down, you're gonna get a nice tunnel. And once I get to the edge over here, I'm gonna move this out. And here'll be the edge. And then I'll let it hang down. And I'll pull this back inside out. I'll show you that in fast motion once I get there. Woo! See, I'm pretty close to done with this part. Now what I did to try to get this to match, this hanging part to match this side a little bit. I'll have overhang, you know, when I do the next one. Um, what I did is I took a, I took it right here and I pulled it up so there's like a V inside of here. I basically took an end that was down here. And basically, this is what I did. I'll, do, I'll, re, I'll redo it again and show you what I did. I took a corner like this and I pinched it up like this. Boom, like that. And then I just, I just tape it all the way across like that. That way I can have it be equal, this side right here. The wall that's hanging down will be equal to the other wall. And I just went ahead and I just kind of stable across like that. Then I restable it across on the inside here. So I have a nice crease right there. Then I'm going to pull this down evenly. I'll let you guys see that in fast motion. The plastic here comes all the way down to the, to the edge. The plastic that's here. It comes all the way down to the very edge. I want to overlap it by about a foot. So. I want to make sure when I pull this down, 
and it's going to be taut as if it's the floor. I have about a foot to go, so I'm going to cut about a foot from where it pinches. Cut about a foot out there, that way I'll have about a foot of overlappage. And to make sure that's airtight, that's what's going to take most grill tape. And look, I'm almost out. So I'll go buy another one of these big ass expensive rolls. Alright, so basically, this is the most typical part, but once I get it all figured out and mapped out where it needs to be, I can save across the top there, and then I'm going to need a lot more duct tape, because that's going to be, I need to be a perfect seam right there, I don't want any air to flow out of that. So for right now, I'm just kind of putting little pieces of tape to make sure that's all going to line up the way I need it to. That way, once I come, come back, I'm going to come back with, with strips. So now I'm just going to pull all this tight and connect it to the wall behind it, making sure that it's all going to get on there right. The parts will have to be folded up like that and then taped. All right, so I need more duct tape, <laughs> but basically I had to make sure as I put all these little pieces of tape here, I had to make sure that I have a straight line so I can put a straight piece of tape to fill in all that gap, fill in all that gap all along there. What was really important here is I needed to fold some of this in order to get it to fit on here right, like this. I need to make sure I had a nice clear gap all the way down here. See, I, I can tape. I'm going to be taping all the way over down here. One piece of tape, well, several pieces of tape overlapping each other, but I'm going to come all the way down the long way with the tape. I had to make sure all this right here lined up, so I had to kind of crunch some of it together, bulge some of it up, so that in the end, you know, it all fit down here. You can see I'm going to have to Pull that right there and tape it. I don't know if you can see all that where it's on tape. There's the one piece of tape right here. I have to kind of pull this little piece of plastic from this side and this side to make sure all that lines up and doesn't leave any air gap. And yeah, so once all that's all taped up, it's going to be nice and airtight in there. And that's the back wall. Everything's good. That's the hardest part there. That back wall is really pain in the ass. But uh, once you get, you know, if you have some help, it's a little easier by myself. A little bit, a little bit difficult, but I just want to show that it could be done by yourself. After that's done, i got to put one more layer coming out here. I'm only going to come out 15 feet, so I actually don't have to come out as far as I thought because that right there is already 10 feet. Um, well, actually, I think it's a little bit more than 10 feet. Anyway, I'm going to come, I'm only gonna come out a little bit less than this right here. Um, I'm going to measure a full 10 feet from the back. I don't think I have to come all the way about out as far as I thought I did. Um, yeah, so that's that. The next part will be taping all that down. i gotta go. I got to go back to Walmart and get a couple more rolls of tape. Um, i got plenty of staples, so I'm good there. Um, I might get some 2 by 4 from a hardware store. I'm almost done with the cave. Uh, I kind of like put it on hold there for a little bit because, um, I don't know, I went and started drinking beer. And then I did a little bit of work yesterday, and then I don't know what happened. I got bored. And so now I'm going to try to finish up today, hopefully, at least the flower side. We're almost done putting this part up. I'll show you right now. But, yeah, so I wear black socks. Yeah. All right, so as you can see, just look at the progress here. Um, so what I did is, when I came to the to the corners here, because it was all kinds of weird and not lining up how I wanted it to, I had to like, you know, put out weird angles and stuff, and then I had to like put a fold here in order to try to get all this to match up so I can, I can fuse it so it's nice and airtight. 
did the same side, same thing for this side over here. I see that this was much easier and much more straight um, than, than the other side was. So, oh, that weird bug flies. I don't know if you can see it. It's a three-legged bug. Oh, wait, no, it's a different bug. That's just a dead bug now. It's a, oh, here it is. This bug right here. I post an Instagram of it. Come on, focus on the damn thing. What the hell is that thing? It's not very big, see? It's pretty tiny. He's cool. He's like bright, bright out of screen. Anyway, so yeah, we're almost done here. Then I went, what I did is I put the tape all the way along the edge here. And then all, all the way here. So this part that overlapped, remember this was the back wall piece. So it's taped up all the way to the top. The whole entire piece, the edges, all the way down to the bottom. It's all taped so it stays airtight. And then it comes and tapes over here. Now, now I've started on the second the second row, which I haven't started taping down yet, I just started stapling it up right here, as you can see. And this is going all the way back, uh, pretty far back, actually. So, and I'm just going to lay these down, you know, in the couple, couple strategic areas. That way everything, hey, look at that. The hell, where did you come from? Were you on top of the brick just now? You're going to be dead, spider, sorry. All right, so I got all that finished. Um, didn't take very long. Not very fun. No, this is very fun, but whatever. All right, so now what I got to do, well, I just lay down this, the rest of the panel plastic I have left, and I can see I don't nearly have enough, I don't think, for the uh, the other flower or, or the bedroom. But anyway, so let me go ahead and share my thoughts So what I'm going to do now. So now I got to tape off all this edge right here. This is the, the main seam. I was very careful this time to make sure that these the lines that come with the panel plastic, it's just the creases because how it was folded up, I made sure to keep these parallel all the way around. See that way, I'm going to get this panel plastic out of the way here. You guys can see what I'm talking about. That way. All right, so that way it's nice and even. Oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to keep this piece of cardboard. This is what the panel plastic came wrapped up in. Nice, thick tube. It's freaking heavy and I could beat someone's ass with that thing. That's not what I'm keeping it for, but I know if I throw it away, I'm going to need it for something. One day I'll be like, hey, it might be 10 years from now. Where was that cool tube at? Um, but yeah, so as you can see now, I have this perfect seam here now that'd be really easy to tape up. So I just gotta take this, take strip, you know, long strips of real tape like I did over there, tape the seam up so it's airtight. Then I just gotta tape this seam right down here, boom, and then there. Now, what I thought about this right here, that super light. All right, so look at this gap that I have right here. See, I'm gonna have the other panel, see how far the panel plastic is on this side. Now, I already figured out how I'm going to do the, the wires. Um, what I'm going to do is I already bought an extension cords and everything. I'm going to show you a really easy way to wire up your grow room um, if you already have the amount of plugs you need for it. If you don't have the amount of plugs you need for it, it's probably be kind of difficult because you only can run so much off each plug, 1800 or 1800 watts max off each plug. And you won't ever want to max them out. You only want to go like 1700. Otherwise, you can cause fires and meltdowns and shit like that. Uh, that's per regular, regular um, plug, like, you know, two plugs. That doesn't mean that each plug on top of each other I'm talking about regular wall outlet. The outlet, the whole outlet itself can only handle 1800 watts. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, you see this big old gap here. And now I'm going to have, to have all of this right here in the way. The other part of the garage door. So I have to start the panel plastic out here. So I have all this gap right here. It's going to be like a, at least a foot gap. And I still have to put my fans, one blowing this way, one blowing that way, to keep the air flowage between both rooms. And so now i got to make tubes. I'm testing out the concept before I dedicate myself to it, before I tape it all down. So I just tack two pieces of tape there, just kind of hold in place. So see, the kind of folding went there. And then this kind of makes a small little square right here, like a little door. And then all I have to do now is take a piece of panda plastic that will cover this hole. And um, just needs to cover this side a little bit and then staple it up there, hang, have it hang down. Have it overhang this by about a foot like this, or maybe a little less than a foot um, this way. And then tape it down the bottom. So just uh, just doing the uh, seams, I've already gone through one of these big ass motherfuckers right here. Look, at, it's all gone. Uh, that's cardboard. So, wow. And I ain't even done that much. Was it worth it? Hell yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, this, the price of a couple of these and the panda plastic and the labor is way cheaper than buying a two or three thousand dollar tent this size. So yeah, this is like a 15 by nine foot tent, something like that. Oh, let's see you actually. Eight feet, uh, uh, three inches or so, so it's a little over eight feet wide. We got 15 feet, folks. Looked it up, so um, let's see if I can go ahead and adjust this thing here. 
I just looked it up. It, it was uh, 8 by 16 foot was the biggest gorilla tent that I could find that would fit in here. The other one is 10 by 20, but that's too big. It would go all the way to the back wall there. And I think I have five foot here, yeah, but I'd have to move all that other way and, and it'd just be too, too difficult to do it. So, um, and I wouldn't be able to get into that side of the garage anymore. So, yeah, the eight by uh, 16 would, would have, I'd have to go with. And just the tent by itself was uh, $1,800. So I'm like, $1,800, eight by 16. All, also, the other down, downside of it has all these metal poles throughout the pole, throughout the tent itself, like taking up precious space for plants and I have to like work around the poles and all that kind of stuff. Freaking fun all that, man. Pure open, open space, no poles hanging down, you know, nothing, nothing like that to deal with. Quick thing, why Gorilla Tape and not some other brand of tape? Because, check this out. It's so freaking sticky and it's so, it's so strong as shit. Love this stuff, man. Like, seriously, Gorilla Tape is the shit. I use it for everything. Love this stuff. And it comes in white. Why the other duct tape too does, I guess, as well. But this shit's sticky as hell and awesome and tough. So installing the AC, this part has not been fun. First, I cut a T, so I went like this, cut straight down to the ground, and then cut a slit straight across that way. Then I cut down here, and I cut down there, so the flap can flap open. So you can see how it comes down right here, and the flap flaps open, so the AC is on top of this plastic right here. This is the T for the top part. Comes down, and I lay down like this. All that's going to be taped back together onto the AC. All this right here on the side, I'll have to tape to the, to the AC like that and then tape that down. Now this side went a little too far and so this side I can't just tape down like that. So I can tape it down to here but then I got this big old piece of area right here I have to fill in. So uh, either on the outside or inside, probably on the outside. Just take a little piece of plastic, tape it here, tape it here, make sure it's all taped off so it's all airtight. And I'll show you what it looks like on the inside and after it's all taped. After the split down the center here, um, I just went ahead to cover it because after I, you know, taped it on this way, this way I had like this hole right here, so I just taped it straight across with 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 uh, duct tape, duct tape all the way across here down the side, duct tape all the way across here down the side like that, so it's all nice airtight. Um, you know, air getting in there. I might go ahead and cut. just about done. Just so got to clean up clean up the mess in here and uh, a couple more little things to do. But yeah, so as you can see here, this is how I have it all all hooked up like this. So we have the. 16, just watch my video on, I probably, I'll probably just include it in this and also as a separate video, but just in case I don't, um, these are just cheapo cords from Walmart, 6 foot one, and they uh, take 1675 watts max, which I'm not going to max out, so I'm not a problem. Converter from 2 prong, 2 prong converter, a little cheapo um, analog timer, which um, I bought from Walmart for under 8 bucks, I think it was. Anyway, I have it set from 7 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning. I run my lights at night because I take advantage of the coolness. That way, because um, if you try to fight the heat in the sun, it's just you're using way too much electricity. So um, I run my lights at night. It's never caused a problem. I've done this for years. I've always grown this way, and it's never caused a problem with my plants ever. Like you see, I, I got world record. So. And then I have the three-prong plugged into the timer so I can run three different like, electronics onto one timer. I can also do a strip here, but I don't need to. Each one of these plugs is going to be for a light itself. So this is going to be for one uh, Perfect Sun 1000 and a light mover. And that's, that's all it needs to be on there. The other one will be for the other Perfect Sun light mover. And then I'm going to have on this side, I uh, have the plugs coming down here as well. These will have um, fans plugged into them. But also, one of them I'm going to have to actually use as probably a fan and my Davida. I think that should be fine. The Gavidia 1000, the light mover. Yeah, so yeah, that'll be under. This one's going to have the fan on this side over here. I'm going to have one light mover here. Each light mover will be three feet apart. The last one will be the perfect sign down here. And it'll hang over to about a foot out of it, and then it'll extend the light all the way down to about here. They have the AC right there. So I'll have room for... I want to make sure that I cover the full lighting area here. Um, the AC gets in the way a little bit of some of my plants and light, but it's not too big of a deal. For the most part, the... Yeah, the, overhead, the lights will come all the way out to about to right about here at the edge of this, um, of the of the of the actual AC. So I can't actually put plants in front of the AC. I didn't really think about that. Uh, it's not too big of a deal. I'll just have the actually the plants can be in front of the AC. It shouldn't be a that big of a deal. They'll have like you know cold air blown on when when they're younger and smaller. And as they grow a little taller, those this the bottom stems will have cold air blowing on them now and again. So far, it's keeping this room cool really easy. I have it set to 78, and, only, and I have it on energy saving. It's only kicking on every now and again. So it hasn't kicked on that many times since I've been in here. 
I have that fan down there just kind of blowing air around just to keep it circulating. And then I'll have, like I said, I'll have a wall fan uh, in front of each light mover um, blowing down the plant. So that row, that row of plants will have nice, you know, nice airflow. Um, I'm not going to be able to fit too many plants under each light, unfortunately, because, uh, yeah, I'm just not going to be able to because of the sun. I have, I have to have my big old water thing right here, too, so I didn't really think about that. But as you can see, got it all duct taped. Got the little slits duct taped, so I cut little T-slits, put the plugs through, plugged them in, duct taped it so I would have all my wires coming in, and then uh, the AC and all that, all that's plugged in already. And I'll have to elevate those off the ground with like little crates or whatever, just duct tape them or something, just where they're not hanging on the ground, just in case. Uh, you never know if you get water on the ground. But yeah, so that's that. So everything is ready to rock and roll. Um, I just got to put in the light movers, and then I got to put in the slits. I'm going to do the same thing like I did the AC. I'm going to cut T slits into the panoplastic, and I'm going to put my fans, or actually I can't just put a fan there because, again, like I said, there's a big gap between each room. And so I have to actually um, create that gap or eliminate that gap. Now, one thing I thought of I could do, let me go ahead and go out here and show you what I thought of I could do here. All right, guys, so I got to, I got to conclude this video now. So the grow room is pretty much all finished. And I got even got one of the perfect suns up on the light rail moving everything. Got the AC going. I just want to make sure that the... Uh, Humidity, everything is staying good, everything is staying good. Got a humidity thing over here, like I usually have in the old, old room. Dripping water into another bucket, sitting on a bucket. Got the big old thing of uh, water here, so I gotta make up. I'm gonna run, I just gotta run the hoses down. Uh, I gotta clean up a little bit, and then that's it. So uh, all the all the wiring, everything is done. Electricity, electricity is all done and in here. Ready to rock and roll, got one fan over there. Just gotta put two more L, uh, two L buckets here to have the two uh, lights, or two fans for light movers. Unfortunately, I realized I don't have the room for um, everything I wanted, so. I wanted three lights in here, but that's not going to be possible, at least not three light rails. Because the other light rail would be right here, and all this stuff, I forgot I have to have all this stuff in here. Plus I stuff have my CO2 tank in here and stuff like that, so this right here is taking up all the room. So um, it would, I would like only have enough room for plants like right here, literally. So I'd have a whole light on light rail, and all they'd be using is a small little amount of area. So it would be kind of a waste of a waste of light energy. So I might have like one of those. The, uh, the, the I always call it the 233, now it's called the Perfect Sun Dwarf Star. And so that's the only one that uses 233 watts. I might have one of those hanging up right here and just have a couple plants right here underneath it. But so anyway, the whole point was to show what the perfect suns can do. So I'm just gonna have two perfect suns light rails instead of using a Gavita. We already know what Gavitas do anyway. Uh, we've seen me grow with the Gavita, so now it's time to grow some perfect suns. Although these are new strains I'm growing, but um, hey, that's fine. Uh, lastly, before I go ahead and close this video, because my, my phone's about to die, I'm just using my packing box here. I'm gonna duct tape like that. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, other cardboard. I'm gonna put it across the top here and duct tape it as well. And then I'm gonna cut out the the end so it's like a um, like a tunnel, right? It's like a square tunnel. The square tunnel is gonna fit through here. I'm gonna cut a thing here, tape it down just like it did the AC. And that's gonna extend from this room into the into the bedroom. And I'm gonna use these fans right here, which I got from Walmart. They're only like 10 bucks a piece, and they're uh, nine inch fans. And so they'll fit on the edge of the box. One will be blowing air in, and there'll be two boxes like that going. And one will be sucking air in, one will be pulling air out of the room, making a circulation between both rooms. Hopefully that'll be enough. If not, then I'll have to get bigger fans. But well, hopefully, um, hopefully that's going to work because I don't want to have big old fans in here, but we'll see. And yeah, um, that's it. So it's all done. And that's what it looks like over on this side. So yeah, I just got to uh, figure out if I'm going to use that or not right here in the center, or if I'm going to use some other LED light right here just to try to take, take advantage of that little bit of space right there that I have left. But uh, it's not too big of a deal. I might just use the fan right there instead of over there in the corner. But either way, two perfect suns. I'm going to be covering a good uh, eight by uh, eight. Um, but I, might, I might need a little bit of walk room, um, obviously. So maybe eight by seven because I need like a foot, foot of walk room there. So that's still good though. I mean, eight by seven is a pretty big area to uh, grow and all, all nice intense light. So yeah, awesome. And then if I have to, um, you know, if that's not enough room, I'll extend out and have like one or two more LEDs just right here, stand, stand still LEDs, just to cover this little area right here. But we'll see what happens. I'll at least have all that area back there covers. That's a pretty good area to cover uh, with a lot of plants. So yeah, two perfect suns. We'll see what they can what they can produce. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And double piece. That was uh, the process of building a grow room. Everything else will be the same for the uh, bedroom, pretty much, except it's not gonna have all this equipment in there because all this equipment is to cool off both rooms and dehumidify both rooms. So all right, double piece.